Hello and welcome. My name is Glenn Seafelt. I'm one of the pastors at Nativity Lutheran Church in St. Anthony, Minnesota. Thank you for participating in online worship. As we continue to deal with the crisis of COVID-19, we will not be resuming in-person worship. In order to do what's best for loving and caring for our neighbor, especially those most vulnerable, we all need to do our part to help stem the spread of this virus. I am grateful that we can join together via the miracle of technology. A word about who we are at Nativity. Whether we are in face-to-face -face or via technology, we are still church. And as a church, we aspire to be a community of faith where people feel like they belong. An inclusive community of faith that loves and accepts people as they are, wherever they are in their journey of faith. We aspire to do this with justice, loving kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Would you please join me and let us pray for our time together. 
O loving God, we worship you in thankfulness and praise. May this time of worship bless you and grant us faith. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. If you are watching this worship service with someone, please reach over and greet them with God's peace. I also encourage you to take time today or throughout the coming week and share God's peace with someone, someone that needs to know that God's peace is there for them. Thank you. I'm just going to keep it to an elbow today. Hi kids, Pastor Ben here. I have a question for you. Have you ever felt so embarrassed or guilty that you just wanted to go and run and hide? I have. How about, have you ever felt so inadequate or like you so couldn't do something that you just wanted to give up? I felt that way too. One more. Have you ever felt so angry or frustrated that you didn't want at all to help when someone asks for help? I felt that way. Why am I asking all these questions? Well, because I'm thinking about the story from the Bible today. It's the story of Isaiah and Isaiah's call to be a prophet. Isaiah saw God and Isaiah felt embarrassed and guilty, like he wasn't good enough, and he was feeling angry at himself and his people, Israel, because they had just not been following uh, God and living the way God wanted to live, wanted them to live. And he said, oh, I'm not good enough. But guess what God did? God saw Isaiah exactly as he is, and God gave Isaiah love and forgiveness, and he gave him a job to do. And when God said, okay, now I've got a job to do, who is going to go out and give my love and my grace in the same way that I just gave you love and grace? Who's going to go out and do that? Isaiah says, me, send me, I'll go and do it. And it was a hard job, but Isaiah did it. And what do we do with this story? Well, in our life, when we're feeling embarrassed or guilty or like we're not good enough or we're feeling angry, we can turn to God and we can pray and say, God, give me your love, give me your grace, and help me to share that love and grace with other people. Would you please practice that with me? Let's practice right now. Would you please pray with me? Dear God, When we feel embarrassed or guilty, when we feel inadequate or like we're not good enough, when we feel angry or frustrated, fill us with your love, 
Fill us with your grace. And then send us out to love all your people. We love you, God. Amen. Thanks so much, friends. Bye-bye. Our reading for today comes from the book of Isaiah. Though I will not be preaching on the text. Since the death of George Floyd, almost six months ago now, Pastor Glenn and myself, two cisgender straight white males, have been sharing the nativity preaching space with preachers of color each month. In an effort to hear their prophetic voice that we, a predominantly white congregation, need to hear in this time and place. This weekend, Pastor Lenny Duncan will bring the message. Reverend Duncan is the pastor of the Jubilee Collective in Vancouver, Washington, which is part of the Portland City footprint. He is an ordained minister of word and sacrament in the ELCA. In recent months, we've been encouraging the Nativity community to read Reverend Duncan's book, Dear Church. A number of you have accepted this invitation and formed small groups around the reading of his book. I am grateful that we, as a community of faith, have engaged with this book and its many challenging and hopeful messages together. Thank you for being a community that aspires toward the hard work of dismantling systemic racism. And thank you, Reverend Duncan, for preaching to us today. Reverend Duncan will be joining in two online conversations with the Nativity community on the evening of Sunday, November 15th. The first will be a conversation with the youth of our community starting at 7 p.m. If you have questions or interest, please reach out to our Minister of Social Justice and Advocacy for Children, Youth, and Families, Kelly Sherman Conroy, at kelly at nativitychurch.org. The second conversation with Reverend Duncan will be a Q&A with those in the community who have read or are reading Dear Church, starting at 8 p.m., Please send questions or interests to Deacon Intern Kyle Soderberg at kyle at nativitychurch.org. As I already stated, Reverend Duncan will be preaching on the book of Isaiah. Today's reading from Isaiah is the prophet's call story from chapter 6. Though Reverend Duncan will preach also on the greater context of Isaiah's time and place. He will also read a chapter from later in the book, Isaiah 55. Now, something to remember about the book of Isaiah is that it's a rather large book. You can be, it can be split into two broad sections. Chapters 1 through 39 represent the pre-exilic section of the book. That is, the time leading up to the Babylonian exile which many believe the prophet Isaiah wrote himself. Chapters 40 through 66, on the other hand, represent the post-exilic section, starting some 150 years later at the conclusion of the Babylonian exile and well after the prophet's death. And so most biblical scholars agree that the book of Isaiah has at least two authors, two Isaiahs. There's actually even a basis to argue that there were three, but we won't get into that today. And so when Reverend Duncan quotes Isaiah 55, the conclusion of the first portion of the post-exilic section, he is connecting this text of hope and comfort in the latter section of Isaiah to the judgment and wrath prevalent 
in the beginning section of the book. It is after Isaiah's cleansing and calling, after today's reading, that he prophesied God's judgment and wrath upon unjust systems and corrupt powers. Suffering and challenge does come for Israel as they are exiled for 70 years. Is this God's judgment and wrath? Or is the culmination of God's judgment found elsewhere, like in the healing words of Isaiah 55? We listen to the reading. The reading for today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. Here ends the reading. to spend time with you. Greetings, Nativity Church. It's so great to spend a little bit of time with you in worship this morning. I assume it's morning, it's evening for me. This is the world we're in. And I love church and serving the people of God, and I always love opportunities like this. Although not enfleshed, we are still together over a few days, a few pixels, a few fiber optics. But here we are, somehow, through the amazing power of worship together as one. I want to greet you in the name of the God of Isaiah. I mean, both of them. Uh, Greet you in the name of the mighty God of prophets. The God who came near and is like the shaking of the foundations of the world. The God who became love and was hung from a tree by a conspiracy of religious leaders in the state. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and I hope I can get somewhere out there, even this is not live, And amen, because I can feel it, I swear. Well, here we are in the post-election days, and although, let's be frank, for some of us, the, the results are like a relief, right? Some of you are mad about the results, but for a person like me, they, they, it just feels like a relief. I'm black and queer. 
I work with vulnerable communities. I'm formerly incarcerated. It's a relief to feel like I may not have to deal with overt racism from the White House. You see, I'm old fashioned. I prefer my racism the old fashioned way. I prefer it systemic and telling me how it's trying to help me the entire time before it locks me up. And see, that's the sort of world of first Isaiah, the pre zealic section of Isaiah, um, uh, that, that, that we're reading today. Um, that the prophet finds that prophet self in a world full of war. I mean, there's whole coalitions that are forming to remove the king because the king is incompetent. The people are starving. The poor are being trampled and the sojourner through the lands are treated like the enemy. They are in a never-ending war and it seems like the end of everything they are. It feels like the death of the nation. It seems like their king, their leader, just can't seem to figure it out. Their enemies are all around. They are surrounded. They've been at this for almost over a year by the time we get to this text. It feels like the mighty seraphim themselves will soon cleave the world in half. And none of the prayers and the festivals and the lamps and the incense and the worship and the gatherings and the homileticians and the theologians and the statements, none of that stuff, the priest, none of it seems to be able to stop what is coming. And in fact, Isaiah seems to invite you into it. At the end of the text, Isaiah invites you into the breach, into the fray. Isaiah invites you to reap what you have sown and face the wrath of this God. Face the power of this God. Face the fury of this God. You have finally awakened from this God's slumber. And you've not awakened it with love, but with complete neglect of the covenant. And it would be hard not to look at this nation in this time, in this place where we find ourselves patriated, unpatriated, or repatriated to a republic that was stolen from our indigenous siblings, that none of us have a right to even live on, that I myself am a descendant of the cargo you acquired for labor at the foundation of this republic, or to look at our queer siblings who've been hiding in the shadows of this nation for 244 years and now have everything this nation so gratefully gifted them just a few years ago about to be snatched away. No, all of this makes it hard to look at the times and not make a direct comparison to the people of Israel, what they're about to experience in our times now. So I don't want us to dwell in that. At Jubilee Collective, where I serve as pastor, we don't even do the confession and forgiveness in this time because we believe what we're living through right now is your confession. And we just hope that our community could be a living absolution for you. So while I lay out all the problems and all the things that Isaiah is facing and then lay them next to ours, I just want to leave you with a little something. I don't want you to dwell in the brokenness. I don't want you to dwell in the hatred. It seems like the last four years have been all about all of us living into hatred, giving into fear. Because after that calamity, after the people are captured and scattered, after they are broken in ways they can never understand, after their culture is shattered in half, after they are colonized and thrown to the winds, we get to hear what this God of wrath looks like. And let me tell you something. This God says, Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. You that have no money, come by and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money 
for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good. Delight yourselves in rich food, incline your ear, and come to me. Listen so that you may live. It will make you an everlasting covenant. My steadfast, sure love for David. So I made him a witness to the peoples and a leader and a commander for the peoples. So you shall call nations that do not know and nations that do not know you shall run, shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. For that God has glorified you. Seek the Lord where the Lord may be found. Call upon the Lord while the Lord is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that the Lord may have mercy on them. And our God, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, for my way, your ways are not my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For the rain and the snow come down from heaven. Do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it Bring forth and sprout, giving seed in the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish for which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. And mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song. And the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. You see, in chapter 6, we hear about this wrath of God. And the people of Israel think Isaiah is talking about the coming exile. They think he's predicting what these armies are going to do to them. But really, the wrath of God is a wrath of mercy. Really, the wrath of God is a wrath of love. Really, the wrath of God is a wrath of hope. And if you ask me, I say this nation is under the wrath of God. Don't you just feel a little bit more hopeful? Don't you just feel a little bit more alive? Don't you just feel that perhaps these promises can come true for you? I'm convinced the whole point of the last few years was that the powers and principalities were trying to convince us that the promises like this one we heard in chapter 55, the fulfillment of the judgment of chapter 6, that these sweet, sweet promises just wouldn't come true, that we should give up on one another, that we should never try to be community again, now we should abandon truth. We shouldn't stand up to evil because there's nothing there to meet us when we do good. And I'm here to tell you that I know for a fact that we try to murder love. We lynch love through a conspiracy of religious leaders in the state. We hung love from a tree and love came back to love us anyway. I'm here to tell you these promises are true. I'm here to tell you that your hope isn't foolish. I'm here to tell you not to fear the wrath of God, for the wrath of God is nothing more than a tidal wave of love. Amen.
thank you for joining together in prayer. If you have a prayer request, you can submit it by going to nativitychurch.org and clicking on Prayer Request. You may also call 612-781-2766 and leave a message. Would you please pray with me? O God of justice, love, and healing, we thank you for your call to justice for all people and for the healing that your love brings. Help us to remember that your justice calls us to ways different than our own selfish ways. It calls us to your ways. Help us, like Isaiah, to embrace your call to work for and celebrate cleansing justice in this world, a justice that leads to your love and your healing. O God of all nations, in these early post-election days, we especially pray for the newly or re-elected leaders of our community, state, and country. We pray they might lead with wisdom and good conscience and work toward the substantial systemic change we need in our society. O God of healing, we pray for all in need of healing in our local community, all those on our prayer list, and for all those that we lift up to you in the silence of our hearts now. We pray for all those battling COVID-19. We especially pray for Sean Conroy, Mary Ellen Hammer, Randy Seafelt, Roger Tenney, Doris Gerke, Ephraim Olani. We also pray for our healthcare workers, that you might use them as your conduits of healing and care. Make us all diligent in our commitment to the pandemic protocols as we love and care for our most vulnerable neighbors among us. O oh God of comfort, we remember those who grieve. Bring your comfort to those grieving the recent deaths of Robert O. Johnson, Helen Zulke, and to the family and friends of those who have died during this week and years past, especially those missing Teresa Eichhorn, Lois Sutterholm, Sherry Carr, Roger Mosvick, Ruth Kaplan. O oh God of joy, we give you thanks for the birth of Nora Jane, granddaughter of Earl and Pat Hendricks. May their family grow in your love. Finally, O oh God, thank you for the community of faith we call Nativity. Inspired by your Holy Spirit, help us as we continue to aspire to love courageously and live generously. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hello, everyone. I want to tell you a little bit about giving here at Nativity. During these past months of the pandemic, many of you have stepped up and made extra gifts. And I'm happy to report that we are stable financially and that your giving at the present time is greater than our expenses. We are concerned about the upcoming season of final of November and December, but we are grateful. And as part of your giving, I want to tell you about some things during this Thanksgiving season and Christmas season that uh, might be of extra attention for you. First of all, many of us are sheltering at home as the virus is spreading. However, there are many who do not have a safe place to shelter in, especially teens. Nativity has partnered with Lutheran Social Service of Minnesota to help teens without homes find safety, to develop skills, 
and to receive resources to eventually live independently. One of the things we do each Christmas season here at Nativity is to provide gifts to encourage and build a hopeful spirit in teens without a home. We call it Nativity Christmas Outreach for Youth, and our Lutheran Social Service Circle here is once again coordinating efforts in order to brighten the holiday season for youth who do not have a home. Because of COVID this year, we are asking people to give a financial gift. Previous years, we would provide lists of items that you could purchase, and these would be distributed. But this year, we would like you to consider a financial gift. You can make a check out to LSS Christmas Youth Outreach. Um, I'm sorry, make the check out to Nativity with the memo LSS Christmas Outreach, or you can use Venmo to make your payment, search for at Nativity Lutheran, and just note it, LSS Christmas Outreach. We are approaching Thanksgiving, and it's easy to be focused on all the things that are putting a hindrance on our life, like the pandemic, some of the concerns we have about the visiveness in the United States, but we can come together and we can still love and we can give thanks. And so our Thanksgiving worship will be online, but with a little twist. It will have input from the community. And Pastor Ben is here to tell us a bit more. Hi, Nativity. Pastor Ben here. Well, it's November, so that means it's Thanksgiving season. And this year, in lieu of our typical annual Thanksgiving Eve worship service, Nativity will be offering an online reflection centered on the theme of gratitude during these challenging and unprecedented times. The Nativity community needs your help in making this happen. In this Thanksgiving offering, we would like to include videos of you, the households of Nativity, answering the following questions. What are you thankful for this Thanksgiving during this challenging year? And why are you thankful for Nativity specifically? We would like these videos to be around 15 seconds long. If you go over or under this, there is grace, absolutely. But know that Nativity staff reserve the right to edit the videos if needed. When recording these videos, please, play, please make sure to record in landscape mode with your smartphone in the horizontal position. Try and create good lighting and use a wide enough shot that all can be seen well. Please email our Director of Marketing, Tom Heller, at tom at nativitychurch.org and he'll share with you a link to a folder on the Nativity Google Drive where you can upload your video file or if you'd rather upload them to your own Dropbox or cloud-based drive and you can share that link link with Tom as well. Videos are due by this Sunday, November 15th. Have fun with it. Thank you, Nativity and blessings on your Thanksgiving season. Bye now. I want to remind you that we are grateful for your giving, and it would be especially helpful this year if you would consider an automatic withdrawal giving using Simply Giving. You can go to our website, nativitychurch slash give, and you can set up that recurring withdrawal. It helps with our cash flow. Also, if you can make a special year-end gift, it would be appreciated. You can do that as well by going to nativitychurch.org slash give and make a one-time gift or increase your giving. You can also use PayPal or, as I said, Venmo. 
And of course, you can always mail your checks in or your offering envelopes. Our address is 3312 Silver Lake Road, St. Anthony, Minnesota, 55418. I am grateful for your generosity. Thank you. Sets lives into motion. Let this be the time when the heart of our labor promotes love of neighbor. Let this be the time when the care for each nation brings peace to creation. Let this be the time. Please pray with me. Generous Creator, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, all signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
and keep us. May God's face shine on us and be gracious to us. May God look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. Go in peace, love courageously, live generously. Thanks be to God. This is my right, all right given by God to live.